Paul Brunton answers life's perennial questions. Why are we here? Quest Series 2, Video Number 10 Presented by the Paul Brunton Philosophic Foundation We are here on Earth in pursuit of a sacred mission. We have to find what theologians call the soul, what philosophers call the overself. It is something which is at one and the same time both near and yet far off, for it is the secret source of our life current, our selfhood, and our consciousness. But because our life energy is continuously streaming outwards through the senses, because our selfhood is continuously identified with the body, and because our consciousness never contemplates itself, the overself necessarily eludes us utterly. Life on earth for us is not to be a goal in itself, but a means to the goal. All its experiences are to be used to shape our character and increase our knowledge, and, above all, to bring us nearer to the discovery of and identification with our overself. Be still and know that I am God is a statement of being whose truth can be tested by experiment and whose value can be demonstrated by experience. A student meeting Paul Brunton I could sense that he was in this envelope of silence. That was my first intuition that this was what self-realization was about. Because God is everywhere present, every individual entity partakes of its life and consciousness through its ray, the overself, to however small a degree. Nobody is ever inwardly separate from it, however outwardly distinct from it. We dwell with it in a mystic togetherness, in a secret continuum. On this view, life becomes an enterprise rich with significance, for we are privileged co-partners with deity. When we first face the mystery, which is at the heart's core and in the mind's essence, we know nothing about it other than it is the source of our being and that it possesses a power and intelligence utterly transcending our own. Yet we feel that it draws our love and, in our best moments, inspires our character. Out of your own free choice and your own initiative, you have to respond to the divine presence hidden in your mind and even your body. You have to grow and ripen inwardly as you have already done physically. Here in this way, you depart from animal existence. There can be consciousness without a brain. Hence, there can be consciousness after death. To verify this, it is necessary to isolate the principle of consciousness from its products. Such isolation can only be affected through some kind of mystical experience, which is the highest possible form of self-recognition. It is the discovery of who and what we really are. It would be wonderful if everyone, everywhere, could slip so easily into the kingdom of heaven and just as easily stay there forever. But alas, the facts of human nature forbid it. People require teaching, training, purifying, disciplining, and preparing before they can do so. And the course needed is a lifetime's, the work needed much and varied. There is another way of knowing beside the ordinary way through the channels of eyes or thoughts. It is a wonderful potency in humans lying largely unused, this faculty of intuition that links us with a higher order of being. Here in this physical world, the ego is put to school. Here it learns lessons, sins, and suffers, 
yields to passion and then checks it, responds to intuition and is led upward. But how does one unfold intuition? By penetrating deeper and hushing the noise of thoughts. The intuition comes from and leads to the Overself. This experience can be brought about by meditation practice. How beautiful, how comforting, and how profitable are those minutes of withdrawal from the world into the blessed stillness in the deeper layers of the mind and heart. Here one can enjoy oneself, one's inner self, one's over-self. The seeker after stillness should be told that the stillness is always there. But we have to learn, first, to let it in, and second, how to do so. The first beginning of this is to remember. The second is to recognize the inward pull. For the rest, the stillness itself will guide and lead us to itself. When we realize that the intellect can put forth as many arguments against this theme as for it, we realize that there is, in the end, only one perfect proof of the Overself's existence. The Overself must prove itself. This can come about faintly through intuition or fully through mystical experience. You feel the presence of something higher than yourself, wise, noble, beautiful and worthy of all reverence. Yet it is really yourself, the best part come at last into unfoldment and expression. It is true peace, because you are inwardly at peace with yourself, with your fellow humans, and with God. Paul Brunton, 1898 to 1981, a best-selling British author of a dozen books, spent much of his early life researching the original sacred teachings of Western and Eastern spiritual traditions. He traveled the world to discover and communicate with Christian, Kabbalistic, Vedantic, Buddhist, Taoist, indigenous, and Sufi masters. Blending the richness of his own spiritual experience and inquiry with these ancient and contemporary teachings, he developed a philosophy and path of practice that suits life in the 21st century, one that expresses the greatest wisdom and love available to humankind. Regardless of how it is named, we each have a divine soul, an over-self or higher self, that is with us here and now waiting to be realized. Paul Brunton's writings are a source of deep spiritual guidance for all those interested in living a divinely inspired life. Anthony Damiani, 1922-1984, was a prominent teacher of Paul Brunton's ideas and founder of the Wisdom's Goldenrod Center for Philosophic Studies. Inspired to penetrate into and understand the depths of traditional wisdom, he taught classes on the major philosophies as well as the teachings of Paul Brunton. His dedicated students compiled the 16 volumes of Paul Brunton's posthumous writings titled The Notebooks of Paul Brunton, available from www.larsonpublications.com. Quotes were taken from Paul Brunton's The Wisdom of the Overself and The Notebooks of Paul Brunton, Volumes 1, Perspectives, 2. The Quest, 4. Part 1. Meditation, 5. Emotions and Ethics, 14. Inspiration and the Overself, 15. Advanced Contemplation. When completed, the Paul Brunton Quest Series 1 and 2 will contain the following topics. Please subscribe to the Paul Brunton Philosophic Foundation channel.